Armed with info and ideas, we drove in, stopping for supper between Beaumont and Houston, during which I convinced Lloyd we could take in the Elvin Bishop concert at the Texas Opry House. We cruised into Houston, found the venue, and enjoyed two sets. A damn good show, and his band was hot. We crawled out of there quite late, very satisfied, went for coffee and donuts, and then parked on a street to sleep. Morning coffee in a donut shop. Lloyd started talking to a local, so I went across the street and bought a map of Houston and a copy of Texas Monthly in order to get up on the local scenes. Then we gave the local chap a ride to a bar down in Richmond and went to Hermano Park for breakfast. We had our first Lone Star beers in a pool hall bar and played up the forklift shtick, yucking it up with locals. Then off to a suburban mall to see the film Days of Heaven, which I really dug. Out in Pasadena, we headed for Gillies, the famous Gillies that I had read so much about, and we got tickets for Jerry Jeff Walker. Next morning, coffee and donuts, a visit to Houston's Art Gallery, and an afternoon search for a shower. Visited the Y in various parks, but no luck. So in true street camping style, we freshened up without water and went back to Gillies. We got front table seats as the vast bar slowly filled up around us. Friendly couples joined our table. We went with one to watch a cowgirl on the famous mechanical buck and bronco. She was so good, could ride it standing up, and no cowboys challenged her. Lloyd got us po' boys, and the Bayou City Beats warm-up band got folks rowdy. When JJ came on, we were worked into a frenzy. It took him about two songs to get going, and then I got going too. Drunk and happy, delirious when Guy Clark came on. They did redneck mothers and desperados waiting for a train, and I poured beer on Lloyd's head and bounced one on my own. The woman across from us was taking pictures of us and the band. It was great. JJ was not too drunk to sing and play, and I was too drunk to care about anything else. Lloyd got the names of couples nearby, and they were inviting us to come to their places for the night, but we were so out of it by the end of that show we decided to just stay in the hood and uh, go for burgers and park on a street nearby. It was quite a night. We stumbled out of our camper at about two in the afternoon. After a bit of confusion, we went to a mall and hung around and then phoned Randy and Leslie, the couple who had been sitting next to me. When Lloyd said who we were, he heard Leslie shout, It's the tourists from Canada! So we made our way across town to their place. A nice home in upper middle class area with two cars out in front. We went in, a bit dirty and nervous, but Randy welcomed us with open arms. We sat and drank and watched TV and chatted a bit, and then they allowed us to shower. It was fantastic. And she made supper for us. We got stuffed and watched The Love Boat, a two-hour special, while eating with them. And more TV and hanging out till late. Randy was a great guy, admitting to being a TV addict and sharing his knowledge of all kinds of B-movies. Ah, it was crazy and I got tired and had to crawl back in the truck to sleep on their driveway, which was all right. Next morning, Lloyd and I went for coffee and donuts before arousing Randy and Leslie. We had a beer with them and then left rainy Houston for the sunny south. Drove down Route 59 to Coastal 35, past the Aransas National Wildlife Reserve. Stopped in Corpus Christi for groceries and gas, and then on to Kingsville for dinner at a pancake house. Spent the night south of there at a highway rest stop near Riviera. Next morning, we had some oranges and continued south. Gave a hitcher a ride who had been to South Padre Island, and he told us about the Trade Winds Bar. We ate supper in Harlingen, and then in Brownsville, we decided to cross the Rio Grande and visit Matamoros. But it was too Mexican for us gringos, so after driving around for an hour, we went back over, up to Port Isabel and across a long bridge to South Padre. There we spent a few hours in the first bar we came to, meeting locals and playing ping pong. Lloyd chatted up the cook so much that we got free beers, made friends with the staff, and they let us stay on their lot for the night. Today we booked ourselves into the big RV park, plunking down $36 for one week. We're a little truck among about a hundred huge mobile homes. But we cleaned our camp stove and cooked on our own picnic table. Met neighbors, old folks, who mostly sit inside their RVs. And then we went for a walk and headed north through the town to find the Trade Winds Bar. It was full of noisy hippies, so we fit right in. Barkeep Jerry was very friendly and we met lots of locals. Another day on South Padre, enjoying the beach, chatting with a neighbor and elderly farmer from the Midwest, 
who went on and on saying, I think you'll agree with me if you see what I mean. I believe you will, because I think I'm right and wondering why it is. It's got to be wrong that we should have to blah, 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 blah. Ah, I got away. In fact, Lloyd rescued me, and we drove north on the main road to the end of it and saw all the squatters and RVs parked for free. Then back to the trade winds at about 5 p.m. and sat down for cheap draft until 7. I was wearing my Canuck hat, which caused a local to start talking to me. He called it the Oak Leaf, and we began to get on great. After a while, Greg invited us to his place, an apartment about two blocks away. There we drank more, smoked up, watched TV, and got fully entertained. He was obsessed with spontaneous combustion and wanted to be a pirate. We laughed so much. And when the beer was gone, we headed out for dinner, stopping on the way to admire his workplace, a lumber yard. Lloyd and I admired the piles of wood that he had stacked and shared our fondness for lumber, and I lifted up a 20-foot 2x10 properly to his approval. Then to Louis's restaurant lounge, but it was quiet and too respectful, so after a couple of years laughing too much, we stumbled out of there and back into the trade winds. I walked all over the south tip, lots of people fishing all over the, and old ladies picking up shells. Had a piece of pie and ice cream and jetties, then mailed a postcard to Randy and Leslie in Houston. Went to the trade winds and met Leroy, who sat with us. I suggested cards, so Leroy, Lloyd, and I played hearts, sitting in the back corner table. When the bar closed, we found ourselves following a guy and three girls to his house, where we went in, sat around, smoked a joint. I never said a word in there. I don't think I was too wasted by then. These days on the beach were spent reading and walking in the daytime, sitting in the trade winds at night. Leroy came over for supper today. He was a serious young farm lad from Iowa. He hung around with us a lot until we left. He slept in his car, parking on the beach up at the north end, and trying to meet other tourists. He was always asking questions. He used why at the beginning of everything. I had to laugh at his mannerisms. He'd start talking about almost anything you could imagine. Things he'd read about or heard about. Saw some guys surfing for the first time. They wore black rubber wetsuits to protect them from the cold water. They didn't get very long rides. Waves weren't that big, but there was about a dozen locals out there. I sat on the jetty and wrote about six postcards as I watched the shrimp boats go out to sea. Must have seen about 20 go by in an hour. It was a gray day. Went into a little beachfront place and had an ice cream. There was an NHL versus Russia hockey game on TV, which I cheered about. Then Leroy came over and we three went down to a pizza inn for supper. It was a coupon that we got to buy one, get one free. We ordered two big pizzas and beer and pigged out. Surprisingly enough, I was able to out-eat Leroy and Lloyd and not feel bad at all. Back in the trade winds. Sat at the bar, bored at first, but then two guys from Austin came in and Lloyd started talking to them. They seemed like excellent chaps. We were soon laughing with them and talked to another guy from Maryland who'd even been to Winnipeg. At closing time, we went outside with these guys and stood around their truck. They were finishers, just come into town to do work on a new condo. And we laughed and laughed and then went home to bed. On Sunday afternoon, I went for a long walk north along the beach. And after about two miles, at least, I went inland to the main road. It was a nice walk past all the big hotels and condos that are quite secluded. I went into a donut shop and had two of the greatest donuts of my life, mainly because I was so tired and hungry. Then walked south to the trade winds and had a beer reading the Sunday papers. The place was dead, so I hitched a ride with a van load of hippies that were going south and got back to our campsite. Lloyd and I had supper and then killed the rest of the evening at the trade winds, which was quite quiet.